we're now going to hand over to um, Nia Collins of the Southampton and Isle of Wight Music Hub to share some of the work that they have been doing around a recovery curriculum. So over to you, Nia. Just make sure I'm unmuted. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you for inviting us to talk about this. Um, obviously, this term and throughout the year, there are clear challenges for us to overcome in schools to reintegrate pupils, reignite learning skills, catch up on lost time. However, I think that in terms of broadening the curriculum, that the recovery curriculum presents us all with a, a really fantastic opportunity to look at how we use music. Um, in fact, not just music, all of the art subjects as a tool to aid us in those goals whilst supporting the health and well-being of children and young people. So I know you all have all heard this term, the recovery curriculum, kind of endlessly bandied about in the last couple of months. But in its basic form, it, you know, it alludes to making up for lost time academically, as it were. Um, but Arts Work uh, and Lorraine has, has, has invited us to share with you our thinking um, in terms of how Professor Barry Carpenter's interpretation of the recovery curriculum chimes with music as a subject, if you'll pardon the pun, and uh, subsequently how we've used what we already know about music in terms of its undisputed positive effect on health and well-being specifically, to design the Music Hub offer to our schools in Southampton and the Isle of Wight. Next slide, please. So you can see here that I've included some quotes from uh, Professor Susan Hallam's incredibly arresting research findings in her published report, The Power of Music, in which she was finally able to collect some real quantitative and qualitative data on how music really does support other outcomes for children and young people, academic and social and emotional. This was very groundbreaking in 2010 when it was first published, but of course the landscape in health, education and for children and young people has changed hugely since then. Certainly as a music hub, we've been helping schools to use music as an intervention, both academically and for social and emotional outcomes for a number of years now, and specifically designing our support for schools to encompass this. So this has helped us to support teachers in schools to advocate for music and the arts to be included in this way. And for those schools in which we've been able to operate in this way, uh, there's been a hugely positive impact. In fact, even within the last week since I sent this PowerPoint to, <laughs> to Lorraine, a new report by uh, Dr. Daisy Fancourt from the University of College London has been published, which was actually commissioned by DCMS, the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, prior to COVID about the, art, the role of arts in improving health and well-being. This report is evidence that even at a policy-making level, the message is starting to get through that the arts are are able to do that for our children and young people. And I would urge you to seek this out um, and to have a look at that at some point too. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you. So um, just while the slide is changing, I, I don't know if you are aware um, or if you are all aware of um, Professor Barry Carpenter's thinking on this subject. Um, he has outlined um, very clearly five losses and five levers. So the five losses are, are things that he feels that children and young people have experienced through lockdown. And then he outlines five levers that, that we can use as educators and as arts organisations to help them recover from the trauma, anxiety, and actually bereavement that they have suffered as a result of those five losses. So I have actually put a link to that at the end of this PowerPoint um, to a think piece he wrote uh, condensing his longer research documents. So if you'd like to have a look at that in more detail, please do. But in its basic terms, uh, for anyone who's not sure what I'm talking about, he outlines five areas of losses, um, which are routine, structure, friendship, opportunity, and freedom. Um, and he, he tells us that they can trigger emotionally, anxiety, trauma, and bereavement. And it, this obviously has an impact on the mental state of children. He then goes on to talk about five levers of recovery, which focus not on knowledge, but on recovery from the loss, trauma, anxiety, and bereavement they've suffered through those experiences. And those five levers are relationships, community, transparent curriculum, 
metacognition and space. So very interestingly, that word space was used a lot by Alison in her keynote and again in the discussions that we just had. Space, this idea of giving young people the space to be creative, to have an opportunity to co-construct their learning and their curriculum. So uh, this presentation just shows you in a little bit more depth uh, how a hub project, I've taken a hub project for each area of loss to show you how it would address um, the, any of the five levers to help support children and young people to improve those outcomes. I'm sure many of you will be doing lots of things like this in school already um, that do exactly the same thing across many different subjects. So, but in terms of continuing to advocate for music and the arts in your setting, I thought it might be useful to apply this framework here to highlight what it looks like at a planning level. Um, and again, just how important the arts are in helping schools to support young people with those aims through this difficult transition and with their health and well-being in general. Next slide, please. Thank you. So I st we start here with the loss of routine. OK, so uh, here I've used the project. I've used an example here, uh, which is a project we're running this term, uh, which is called the 10 minute sign and sing. Uh, so in this project, we're giving our schools regular video content for each key stage uh, to deliver in-house singing or signing uh, or just signing if, if schools aren't singing yet in a, in a COVID safe way. This could be done daily, weekly, however schools would want to work that into their routine. Um, and we think we've outlined there, then you can see on the, on the, on the screen what we think pupils will gain from being part of that experience. A sense of routine, emotional response, mindful listening, you can see that all down there. Um, and then on the right hand side of that slide you can see that we have broken that down uh, into how we see that supporting some of the five levers of recovery. So of course not every activity would address every single lever, nor should it necessarily, but this could be done in a more in-depth way at every level. But it, it gives you an idea of how we're designing our projects to feed into this idea of recovery from those losses and the levers of recovery. Here I've chosen three different levers uh, of how this activity will support them. So relationships, working together with a teacher, working together with each other, community, a group performance, uh, and metacognition, reskilling learners through learning a new skill like sign language, for example. Um, so for each slide also I've added uh, some quotes from a variety of other projects we've, we've previously run and, and evaluated in detail afterwards either prior to lockdown or during. So this has provided us with a clear evidence base to support the value of this way of working and to show us the difference that music makes. This particular quote here is taken from our action research with pupils engaging in online one-to-one -one instrument lessons during lockdown and I think it really clearly illustrates the point that in providing this people with a routine activity despite the turmoil and using that relationship lever between teacher and pupil has in the parents experience had an immediately positive impact on well-being of the child. Next slide please. So continuing with our next loss, the next loss is structure which in some ways is kind of similar to routine but Barry Carpenter outlines this as the need for children and young people to spend some time re-engaging and getting reacquainted with the learning process. So the project I've chosen here is First Access is something all music hubs do. It's whole class instrumental tuition um, at where, you know, a whole class, usually in primary, usually key stage two, uh, will, will learn a, an instrument as a class. They all have an instrument to learn together. So I thought this was a good way to illustrate this because the act of learning a new instrument, I think, very clearly demonstrates this with set units which build on skills week by week, skills that you have to master as you go along. And that very clearly feeds into this lever of metacognition, of reskilling, rebuilding um, and, all, and all that kind of stuff. So the, the fact of the act of learning an instrument really feeds into all five levers. Um, it's clear you'd need a good sense of community, you know, to play together as a class and good relationships. But I think the important one here is the transparent curriculum. Uh, and, and Barry Carpenter defines this as pupils feeling like they have lost time in learning. And we must show them how we're addressing the gaps by consulting and co-constructing with our pupils. So in this case, for example, you've got a whole class learning an instrument at different speeds and you know naturally at different speeds and levels of ability so their input into the lesson to guide the teachers to their particular next steps is key to the success of those sessions it gives them agency and power over their learning 
We've got lots of quotes again feeding into this uh, area from previous projects we've done. The one you see here was taken from a case study in one of our family music making sessions, which we run with looked after children in the city. So in these sessions, you know, prior to lockdown, even we've been using these levers to good effect for quite some time. Um, you know, other comments from our colleagues teaching online during lockdown were that they found that young people had actually started to become more independent with their learning from home. Those who were engaged in it, of course, tuning their own instruments, reading music. Um, and, you know, this comes back to this idea of helping them recognize and co-construct their next steps. Uh, you know, that lever will really help their recovery from the losses that they've, they've suffered. Next slide, please. So the loss of friendship, I think actually, I think Alison said this at the beginning, it's something that we've all suffered from actually during lockdown. And in fact, I'm sure all of the losses here and all of the levers here also apply to us as adults as well. Loneliness, social isolation, um, and for children and young people, certainly the lack of belonging to peer groups, you know, has had an impact on, their, on them. Uh, that's again, that's a kind of a, a trauma and a bereavement that they suffered during lockdown. So uh, I've used an example here uh, of our Learning Heroes songwriting project, uh, which gives pupils the opportunity to write their own lyrics to a superhero song focused on their school growth mindset system. So the mu and the Music Hub will then record a version for each school once we have got the lyrics from your pupils. So I'm sure most of you in school, certainly primary, have something like this in-house. I think my daughter's school have the hilariously named superheroes Determinator, Collaborator, Reflector and Connector, for example. Um, so feeding into those ideas of metacognition. So the act of writing and singing and rap or rapping and being creative about their own community as a group, I think will really help pupils to continue to reestablish those relationships and that sense of school community, which go all go towards continuing to cushion that discomfort some people still feel about returning. And it, it again comes back to that idea of space that that we talked about a lot in the discussion, you know, allowing pupils their own space to find their own voice and creativity and to lead the learning for themselves. You can see another quote here from our family music making sessions, again, evidencing that opportunity that music brings to everyone and the impact it has on their wider health and well-being, even their ability to succeed. Often we found that Yes, our interventions have a positive effect on social outcomes, but as an inevitable knock on effect, they also improve academic outcomes at the same time. Next slide, please. So moving on to the loss of opportunity. So this is our fourth loss. Um, so the project I've chosen here um, is the synthesis project. Um, so in terms of opportunity, again, Alison touched on this at the beginning, but uh, you know, in terms of engagement uh, during lockdown, I think the Sutton Trust published figures that I think 23% of pupils were taking part in online learning, 30% of those, you know, 30% were middle class, 16% were working class, um, you know, 27% of the most advantaged state schools were getting work back with 8% of the least advantaged schools not, you know, getting work back. Um, and that the attainment gap for disadvantaged pupils has dropped by at least 10% in that period of school closure. And, you know, very similarly, the online learning that we were delivering, we, we were seeing the same thing. We had 29% um, learning, but the, the take up from those pupils who were pupil premium, SEND, free school meals was very low. You know, there were technology barriers, uh, all sorts of problems that, that, that have, have meant that that has manifested. So that loss, that, lo that lack of opportunity, it's manifested itself in learners as a lack of motivation and then obviously a lack of confidence. This particular project, the Synthesis Project, uh, is a youth music funded project which helps you, uh, children and young people in challenging circumstances to compose and perform music using iPads. So these targeted sessions with SCND and behaviour settings or groups are designed very specifically to develop musical learning in a very different way. So rather than focusing on musical skills, these sessions are led by the children and young people and we allow them to lead the learning themselves in terms of how they're feeling that day. Uh, and again, so we're using that metacognition lever here to frame learning in a different sense. And again, giving them space to explore their sense of self through music whilst offering them an opportunity they might not otherwise be able to access via technology, both culturally and physically. That doesn't mean to say musical skills are not learned along the way, but, but those are not the focus of this project. They do, however, certainly manifest as an outcome. 
Um, another quote here you can see is very clear on how having that moment for creativity and self-expression, even in a one-to-one -one music lessons, has an immediately positive impact on health and well-being, as well as musical progress for this particular learner. Time and again, we've had the feedback that taking part in music has built confidence at every level and ability. Next slide, please. We just have two minutes. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this is the last loss I was going to talk about, which is the loss of freedom. Um, so Barry Carpenter calls this a kind of loss of self-image and self-esteem for children and young people. Um, and we've got various uh, digital online um, projects running that schools can access. They're free to access from national partners, so it's an opportunity for them to have a go at something they wouldn't necessarily be able to engage in. Um, and it just gives an opportunity to move, to breathe, to be creative, to have that opportunity in the day to do something surprising and creative, uh, as again, as we were talking about earlier. Um, so, I mean, I'll just sum up here because we've only got a couple of minutes left. You can see um, you've got all the text there you can read, but I hope it's been a useful insight into how Southampton Isle of Wight Music Hub are operating within this framework provided by Barry Carpenter and how we look at each project in the planning stages in this way. As I mentioned earlier, we've been operating with health and well-being as one of our primary outcomes for work with schools for a number of years now, building on our own evidence base for sort of positive impacts we've seen over the years. Similarly, I'm sure you all are as well. Schools based staff, arts organisations are all already very much working in this way too, even without that, that specific framework. I think as educators that comes to us all very instinctively. But at this particularly challenging time, I think it's been really useful to have a framework like this to work from. Um, and on my last slide, sorry, I meant to say next slide. Um, uh, I've just put some links there to, to some references, um, which you're welcome to seek out. Uh, you know, some really interesting articles there. Um, and, you know, please do feel free to contact even myself or um, directly if you've got questions or Hub Lead Cafe, who will also be part of the Q&A panel later on today. Happy to talk about it in more detail then. Um, or check out our website, southamptonmusichub.org or islawhitemusichub.org um, and look at our free projects and CPD for teachers. Many thanks for listening. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you so much, Nia. That was, um, that was fascinating to listen to and I think it's brilliant too. I mean, you've contextualised in terms of the work you're doing, so many of the things that Alison picked up on. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, As she yeah. was talking, I was thinking, this is so obviously synergist, you know. Yes, it was. There was great synergy there. Um, but I think it's so helpful to have, just as Alison shared um, her experiences and so on, it was really, really helpful to have, um, you know, concrete examples of the kind of activities you are doing to deliver on those levers and elements of that recovery curriculum. So really, really relevant. And lots and lots of questions for, to asking um, to have a copy of your presentation. So we'll make sure that happens. Thank Please you do. so much, yeah. Nia will be with us, staying with us, so of course keep the questions coming and uh, you can pick up with her again in the Q&A later on.